Hello, a very warm soul to soul blessing to you. My name is Chloe Folden, and you're very welcome to the part two video installment of the mini video series and Quran thread weaving, building the rainbow bridge. Just to reiterate, it is best to watch these videos in order. So the information shared in each video makes more sense. So if you haven't watched the introduction yet, part one, please do. And then please come back to this video because then this video will make a little more sense. So this is Ant Qurana Thread Weaving, Building the Rainbow Bridge, the video explaining birth, stage one, and stage two of Building the Rainbow Bridge. And to help with that, I'm just going to bring up my screen share. And I just want to bring up that document, Building the Rainbow Bridge. So this is the free PDF document available on my website that accompanies this series of videos. So I'm going to come to stages of building the rainbow bridge on page 15. So I did say in my introduction to please take some time to read through the glossary. So then some of the phenomena I'm discussing is more clearly understood. Summary of the state of building the rainbow bridge. So before I start into stage one, it's very important to first of all explain birth in terms of and Qurana thread weaving. So just to keep this brief, because I believe I did explain this briefly in another Rainbow Bridge video. When, when a woman is pregnant, the baby forming in the womb, when that's occurring, hierarchy are of course very aware that that is happening. As the baby forms and grows, the lords of karma then decide based on who the mother is and all of her accrued karma, mean, meaning the good, bad and indifferent karma, and same for the father, who they were tied to in past lives, as well as the solar angel that could possibly receive that body at the time of birth, it's then decided based on all of those factors, which solar angel will receive the gift of the physical body forming. So I'm talking about your highest self when I'm talking about the solar angel. While the mother is pregnant, what can sometimes be seen as a very large orb floating around the mother at different intervals and also floating in and out of the womb. And what that is, is that is the solar angel being considered coming down to just see how things are it's the equivalent of a handshake a how are you before a deeper union between baby and solar angel occurs and then of course once there's been a little bit of contact the solar angel then returns to the kingdom of souls and then comes down again at another interval to float around the mother and the forming baby to just it's a gentle get to know you. When it comes to the mother actually giving birth, so birthing, so not so much labor, but the actual birth of the baby as that's about to happen. And once again, it doesn't matter whether it's a natural birth or medically assisted birth. As that baby comes out, the solar angel hovers down over what's happening. And when the baby comes out, however that happens, the solar angel then hovers over the head of the baby. And the minute that baby takes the first breath, the solar angel, that orb of light, then puts a thread of energy down into matter, meaning the baby. And that first initial linkage thread is a portion of the consciousness thread which in this document is called the soul to head thread. So at birth with the first breath, 
soul angel positions itself above the head and puts a thread of light down into matter, which is the first portion of the consciousness thread from soul star down through the crown to anchor into the pineal gland. That is the first proper union between matter and spirit at the time of birth. Over the next two to three months, the conditioning then takes place as that union deepens. And by the time baby is a couple of months old, that soul to head thread will then gently start to weave and thicken, which prompts an opening of the first ring of petals in the heart center, which is the physical plane ring of petals, and there are three. Depending on your ray makeup, meaning the rays that make up the colors within your auric field, that dictates the order the petals open in, but there are three. With the physical plane petals, the first ring of petals, there is physical plane love, physical plane knowledge, physical plane sacrifice. They always open one at a time and the order is dictated by your ray makeup or what I call the ray makeup. That is called stage one of rainbow bridge building. So by the time the soul to head thread is anchored and you know it's anchored when all three physical plane petals are open. That marks completing stage one of rainbow bridge building. And that usually takes from physical birth to around mid to late teens to achieve. What I would also like to add, because this also helps the document uh, make a little more sense as well, is when a baby is born and that union occurs, babies aren't born clear. That's mistaken impression. What happens is, based on the past lives that are recorded in the solar angel, meaning personality past lives, everything gets recorded for all of the good, bad and indifferent that happened within those lifetimes. And that is then reiterated again in the next lifetime. But when babies are born, the union has to happen gently and slowly. So the minute a baby is born, it's all not there to see. Number one, because it hasn't found form yet. Number two, maturity age. It can't be registered properly by the personality. And number three, timing. Timing. Timing in terms of life events that get triggered at different stages in one's life. So when babies are born, what there is is the seeds of karma. When there is proper intact clairvoyant inner vision, with babies, you can see hints of where those seeds of karma will be. But then what happens is, as a baby matures, and when you reach around, you know, tweenies, as it's called, so just before teens, that's when you can start to see more clearly the external patterns forming, internal already there. You can already see internal in babies from birth. The external patterns are starting to form more at that point in time. So the seeds of karma are starting to pattern out and mature in terms of where there was karmic imbalance from past lives, where there has not been full resolution of certain experiences from past lives. So a lot of people turn around and go, oh, well, babies are born clear. And then, you know, it's because of their parents that these uh, marks form or the, no, no, that is misinterpretation of a spectacular amount. Meaning it's not that certain life situations wouldn't aggravate patterns that are forming or certain life events wouldn't be triggered by 
the patterns forming. But nobody is born clear, especially in this point in time in human evolution, the bulk of humanity is on a reiteration treadmill. So those seeds of karma start to form more fully between maybe 20 years. But then what happens with stage two really starts to form the marks of that imbalanced karma and external patterning far more obviously. It comes more to fruition. So stage two of rainbow bridge building is when stage one has been consummated. What then happens is the soul to heart thread starts to anchor. And I'd like to highlight that as well. It's the threads thickening and weaving that trigger the petals in the heart into unfolding. So the soul to heart thread is the thread that's usually woven next. The soul to heart thread from soul star anchoring to the heart. As that thread starts to weave and thicken, it triggers the opening of the second ring of petals, which relate to the astral plane. So the first ring relates to physical plane and physical plane development and lessons. The second ring of petals relates to the emotional plane and emotional development. And once again, they open in order of your ray makeup, meaning there's three as well, astral plane love, astral plane knowledge, and astral plane sacrifice, and once again, always one at a time. As that thread starts to weave and thicken, and for most, that's around mid-teens to late teens, it triggers those astral plane petals into unfolding, which trigger life events that are mainly for deeper emotional development and growth. That usually then takes the first portion of adulthood to reach or just stop shy of. What I mention in this document, and it's here on page 18 of the PDF, most adults on the planet have three to five heart center petals open, the soul to head thread fully built, and a partially built soul to heart thread. Most adults look like this to me until they do deeper work to start removing external and internal patterns. So by the time someone's reached mature adulthood, uh, not by virtue of um, character, but by virtue of years, just maturity years, that's usually where someone's at. And I'd also like to make the point, but I might put this in another shorter video, that coming back on what I said earlier of the first breath, um, I find it quite sad that that information has gotten lost, that that's the importance of the first breath. That first breath at the time of birth is the window that allows the solar angel to put a portion of light down into matter to start the formation of the soul to head thread. That is the importance of the first breath. It's not just the release that when the baby breathes and hacks up any phlegm or fluid, it marks you're here. You know, you've, you've come into the realm of the living fully with your soul or angel. I do also believe that this is the reason why astrologers need your time of birth, at least proper decent esoteric astrologers. That's, I believe, the reason it's so important and needed, because it marks that event. Coming to what I was just about to start to talk about in terms of taking the majority of, well, not the majority, but the first portion of adult years to reach, that by the time someone is 21 years of age, everything that was in terms of where all of the potential was gained in previous lifetimes, in terms of where all of the ill that hasn't been worked through, where it will be. In other words, by the time you've reached 21, everything in terms of all of the good, bad and indifferent that is going to occur. That stage has been set and everything continues to reiterate from that point. So I also find it quite sad 
that that's also been forgotten about the relevance of age 21. 21 marks you being able to physically live to a point where you're now at a point where you are on the replay button for everything that will be. So for most, by the time they reach 21, they are just short of finishing stage two. So around maybe four to five petals open. And what I mean by that paragraph that I just read from the PDF is that is the point the majority of humanity reaches organically, meaning without any enforcement technique, just by virtue of living, breathing and being, that is the organic point of evolution that you reach. If you want to develop further and seek to heal in balanced karma that's causing a reiteration of ugly occurrences and repeated difficulties, then a proper karmic clearing technique must be employed to help you along the rest of the way. Otherwise, that's where someone stays, no matter how long you live. So just to reflect back on our very long human history, it's taken this long in human history for humans to evolve, meaning the human family, to evolve to just short of stage two. It's taken that many past lives, that much reiteration of human consciousness to reach a point where organically that's where you're going to be by the time you reach adulthood, just being. Enforcement te techniques are needed to get you the rest of the way. I just want to have a quick look at my notes to see if there's anything else I'd like to share about stage one or stage two. I don't believe there is, but on that note, if you've watched this video and you have any deeper queries, please feel free to contact me. My website is www.chloefolan.com and I always welcome queries, but please do give me a chance to reply. I'm blessed with being very busy and I'm very fortunate in that respect, but that does mean that sometimes it can take me, you know, about three, about three days or so to reply to emails sometimes, but please send me your emails. Please send me your queries. They're very welcome. And I'll reply when I can. Blessings to all.